Hello first grade, so today we're going to make a collaborative community map. So we have, we know that communities, neighborhoods, cities are built on a grid of streets and then houses and buildings are built along the street. And the street's important because that takes you to the places you need to go. And so our learning objective is that we will understand communities where we live are based on a grid and have a corresponding map. So each one of you is going to get a small white piece of paper with part of a road drawn on it already for you. And then all of these pieces, each student's piece will go together in one collaborative community map. So it'll be a class collaboration, each person doing part of the community. And so the first thing I want you to do when you get your paper is you're going to notice that your paper has a letter and a number written on the back. That's for me to know which way the grid goes. So don't erase that. And you're going to then put your name and the day you have art, day A, day B, day C, on the back in pencil. Flip it over. <clears throat> and I have created three tag board patterns for you. We have a rectangle, which is a building, which your building could go horizontally like this, or you could turn it and it could be a taller building vertical. And then you have two roof shapes. We have this trapezoid shape and this triangle shape. And I want you to think about what you want to include in your community, in your part of the community. Do you want to include restaurants, libraries, and schools? Do you want to do a neighborhood of houses? Do you want to do a park? Do you want to do a parking lot, a gas station, all the things that could be in a city, you get to decide. And I want you to use these tag board patterns to help you to draw buildings. And know that the buildings should be along the street. All buildings are close to the, most all buildings are close to the street unless they have like a driveway that leads to the street and off the street. So I just want to show you how to use these tag board patterns. So I can use it horizontally like this. Put it right along the street and draw the top two sides. Pick a rooftop and I'm going to have my roof overlap the top of the building and then tr just trace the part that's outside the building. So there's one building. Um, I don't like this line here so I'm going to erase that line and I'm going to draw that line with the triangle, I like that better. Okay. Um, this is gonna be a house, so a house needs a door. Try to draw as straight as possible. We don't want our homes to look like they're melting. Um, my house needs a couple of windows. Maybe I give it a chimney. And then I want my house to have a garage. So I'm going to add another smaller rectangle and another rooftop for the garage. And then the garage door is going to be nice and big and take up a lot of that space. Maybe this will be a two-story house, so I'll add another level of windows for this house. Maybe I add some shingles on the roof and add some detail. So I want you to think about all the things that you could add to your city and the details and then add those to your buildings and your cities and your part of the city. Okay, maybe I use this one as a tall building now I could even make it taller. I could take and instead of tracing the top of this, I could slide this up a little bit, make it a little bit taller. And maybe this could be um, some townhomes all in one building. So there would be multiple levels. Now remember when you draw windows, they kind of should be about the same size and on the same level. Um, I will make, let's see, add a tree. I'll add another tree over here. And you can just do some simple trees that have circle tops and sticks. So here's a circle for the top of the tree and a stick for the bottom. You could do a triangle tree to make it look like an evergreen tree. 
and let's see I can't have anything running off because I'm gonna connect mine with my uh, friends paper with somebody else in the class so maybe I turn it around and I draw some buildings on the other side that goes to the street. And then this could have a sidewalk from, from the driveway to the door. All right, so I want you to add buildings and um, and you can even do some stores and things to your part of the city. And then I'm going to have you use an extra fine Sharpie marker. So these are permanent, extra fine to trace over your pencil lines. So trace over them slowly. If the marker stops working, Put the cap on it, get a different one. I want you to use a marker that works. Then after you trace with marker, you're gonna use your pencil to erase any pencil lines that are poking out until you get something that looks like this. So here is my finished city done in black permanent marker outline and then I erased all my pencil lines. So, and this is what we're going to create for our collaborative community, each of us doing one part of our community grid. And then we're going to put them all together to make one large community artwork. Good job, first grade. So now we're going to add color to our collaborative city. And each of us got one part of the city, which is the road part. And then we added buildings of our choice next to the road. Things that you, you need in a city. You need homes, apartments, a firehouse, grocery stores, restaurants, things like that. So we're gonna use liquid watercolor to paint in our paper. And you're gonna get a couple of different size paint brushes because some spaces are gonna be small, so you need a small paintbrush. Some spaces will be medium, so you need a medium paintbrush. And the first thing that we're all gonna do is we're gonna paint our road black. And it doesn't end up looking like a really dark black when we paint with the liquid watercolor. It looks more grayish, but that's okay because concrete is gray and most of our streets are made of concrete. So I want you to take a medium paintbrush and paint in your roads very neatly and completely, all in black, using the black liquid watercolor. Now remember that this is a collaboration. Each of us are doing part of the city to make one big whole city. So you don't want your part to be the sloppy part. So take your time and paint it in as neatly as you can. Okay, so now I'm gonna look and see if there's any other black I wanna add. And I do want to add some black to the tires on my fire truck. So I'm going to use the tiny paintbrush, dip it in the black, and very carefully try and paint the tires of my fire trucks. Okay. Now when you change colors, you need to rinse your paintbrush off. I'm going to continue to use this tiny paintbrush to paint, use brown to paint in the tree trunks. 
and maybe some of the rooftops of my city. We're painting with watercolor, so it's like painting with water, and water kind of puddles and moves out of your control. So I want you to try your best to stay within the space that you're trying to, but if you go outside that space a little bit, that's okay. All right, and then when you use the other colors, look at what you're painting and decide, do you need a medium paintbrush or do you need a small paintbrush? What is gonna help you to do the neatest job? Unfortunately, okay. And then after you get everything painted, this white space, that's gonna be painted green for grass until your paper looks like this. So here's my finished cityscape. It's painted and dry, so you can see what the black watercolor ends up looking like. And you can see all the empty space is green for grass. And then the trees are green. And you can see that sometimes the brown or the other colors bleed and run into each other and get a little fuzzy. And that's okay as long as you're doing the best you can. Now I left my doors and windows white, but that might be really hard for you to do. So it would be okay if you just painted your whole building, like this whole building red and painted over the windows. That's okay, because we'll still be able to see the permanent marker, the extra fine Sharpie marker poking through, and we'll be able to see those windows. But I was just real careful with a small skinny paintbrush. And you can see here, I painted over that entire window. And the mistakes happen there with watercolor. Nothing's ever perfect. The edges are always fuzzy, but that's what gives it really neat character when you look at the work. So I'd like you to take your time and paint until your whole paper is painted. Maybe if you choose to leave the windows white or part of something white, you can, but most of your paper should be painted. And that's what your finished collaborative city is going to look like when you add color.